So for the supercritical pitch for, to make the bifurcation diagram, we're interested in plotting the fixed points as a function of the parameter. The parameter is r, and uh, the fixed points, when r is negative, uh, we have only one fixed point, it's at zero. Um, and let's check its stability by drawing some arrows. Uh, when we're below, we're increasing. When we're above, we're decreasing. It's a stable fixed point. I'm going to draw in that stable fixed point. Uh, right when r equals 0, uh, we're at a bifurcation. Uh, and it appears to actually uh, still be stable in this case. And then uh, when r becomes positive, uh, okay, um, we've transitioned to, uh, let's draw in some new arrows. We've transitioned to three fixed points, and now from below, we're increasing. Uh, right here, we're decreasing. Here, we're increasing. And there, uh, we're decreasing. Note that if we were looking from kind of far away, sort of at a large value of x, um, the picture looks kind of similar. If we zoom really far out, this little interior part disappears, and uh, we're coming in from out here, and we're coming in from out here, and that's really similar to what's happening over here. So the main thing that's changed is something changed has changed very locally at the origin. Very locally, the stability of this fixed point has changed, and now it's unstable. Let me draw that into the bifurcation diagram. So when r is positive, that point has become unstable. That's a dashed line. And um, in addition, these two new fixed points have been born symmetrically, and uh, they've been born, they're both stable. So that's our bifurcation diagram. Someone is dialing a knob that changes R, and we're puttering along with the origin being perfectly stable, perfectly stable, perfectly stable, and then suddenly we get to this special value of R, uh, the bifurcation value, and um, R fixed point is no longer stable, and so maybe we continue to putter along at the fixed point, but actually now immediately there's a problem, and if we experience even the tiniest of perturbations, we're going to go flying upwards, or we're going to go flying downwards, I'm going to draw in some arrows to help us indicate, uh, indicate that. So from before, we were stable, we were stable, and now uh, it looks like this. There's another important case of the pitch port bifurcation. If x dot is equal to rx plus x cubed, we're going to have a slightly different picture. Let's consider the x equals 0 fixed point and watch what happens to its stability as r changes. So here, f of x is rx plus x cubed, and we can compute stability by finding f prime of x, which is r plus 3x squared, and we're evaluating at 0, so this is simply equal to r. So for r less than 0, stable, r greater than 0, unstable. So if we're plotting the bifurcation diagram, the 0 case looks like this. Uh, stable, and then unstable. It looks identical to the pitchfork bifurcation that we were looking at a moment ago. Let's look at the other two fixed points. So um, f of x equals 0 implies x equals 0, uh, or um, r plus x squared equals 0, which implies uh, x squared equals negative r, so x equals plus or minus the square root of negative r. For this square root of a negative number to make sense, um, we need r to be less than zero. So what we're seeing is that these two other fixed points exist when r is negative. This is different from before. Uh, they're going to look like this, and I happen to know from an argument about um, about the alternation of stability in fixed points, I happen to know that they're going to branch unstably. Okay, so what happens? We're puttering along happily on this zero fixed point. As r increases, puttering along, puttering along, r is increasing, and 
suddenly when we go through the bifurcation, um, and we're right over here, um, well, unlike in the previous pitchfork, the supercritical pitchfork, we're now in what's called a subcritical pitchfork, and our nearby stable solutions, they've completely disappeared. It's really not clear, if we perturb a little bit, it's really not clear where we're going to go. Uh, and so this is the subcritical case. Okay, subcritical pitchfork. Okay, so in summary, in the supercritical case, uh, as we turn the knob on R, and in the subcritical case, uh, we have a stable zero point, and we're turning the knob, turning the knob, turning the knob, turning the knob, and it becomes unstable, and so uh, we, our solutions will no longer be attracted to this fixed point. They'll get sent somewhere else. Uh, that's true in both cases. And in the supercritical case, uh, new stable solutions are born. New stable solutions are born really nearby. So we come across and we get perturbed very slightly and immediately we're right on this very nearby branch. And as R continues to get moved, we're gonna stay on uh, this stable point. Or if the perturbation was a little bit different, we'll land on this branch and we'll stay on this stable point. Um, so although we don't know which of these two branches we're going to land on, it's quite obvious what happens uh, once we get over here. We're going to be on one of these two branches. The subcritical case is not so nice. Uh, we're moving along, we're moving along, we're moving along, we go through our perimeter, and suddenly uh, we perturb, and there is nothing nearby. There is no obvious nearby solution. Obvi often a subcritical pitchfork is accompanied by a saddle node somewhere far away, that produces some stable branches. And so potentially in that type of situation, we would come through and we would jump a really long distance uh, to some far off stable state um, that we may or may not have been able to identify via our mathematical analysis.